Hi, I'm Kostas Hajapanias. Happy to be here today in recognition of Brain Awareness Week. I uh, wanted to um, discuss some topics with you all. Uh, I am the uh, site chair for neurosurgery uh, in our downtown here in the Mount Zion Health System, and I also direct our neurosurgery oncology program for the entire Mount Sinai Health System. Uh, we we want to be able to go over a few things uh, with our patients discussing brain tumor surgery today. So I'm Dr. Raymond Young. I'm a, a neurosurgeon here at Mount Sinai, uh, and I work as part of the uh, malignant brain tumor program. My name is Isabel Germano. I am a professor of neurosurgery, neurology, and oncological sciences. I work within the neurosurgery department at the Icahn School of Medicine at uh, Mount Sinai in New York, New York. And I'm also the uh, director of the Comprehensive Brain Tumor Program here. I am the um, system-wide um, vice chair for diversity and inclusion. My passion and my uh, focus of my career is and has been um, brain tumors. So when we think of malignant brain tumors and surgery, our patients are very concerned about possible risks of the surgery and you know, potential bad outcome we go and, and operate in or around the brain. Fortunately, in this day and age, we have a lot of newer technology that provides us the opportunity to perform uh, safe brain tumor surgery, allow us to really go in and maximally resect malignant brain tumors in patients and, and allow us to take out the tumor and keep the patient neurologically intact. So they, they you know, can retain their neurologic function like they had prior to surgery. And we are using these technologies on a routine basis in the operating room to really help us as tools form safer brain tumor surgery for malignant brain tumors. So not all brain tumors need to be taken out. We, the malignant brain tumors on the whole are surgery for a diagnosis and then planned therapies. And that could be more surgery for resection of the tumor. Uh, and, you know, we, we have tumors that are, are non-malignant. There are benign tumors uh, that grow very slowly for years, and, and some actually don't grow at all. And those can be watched with just serial MRI scans over you know, a period of time, just to follow the, the growth of those tumors. If those tumors don't grow much, then we really don't offer any type of surgery or removal for those tumors. But on the whole, the malignant brain tumors, uh, we do aim to uh, diagnose the patient with the tumor first. Uh, and then perform maximal resection, uh, especially if the tumor is causing pressure for the patients having symptoms resulting from that. We, we have certain tumors that patients require biopsies first, and some of those are, are deep lo deeply located tumor brain, uh, and it's safer just to do a, a needle biopsy in those circumstances. And then we have other tumors that are larger and causing pressure on the brain and uh, for the patients. And we can actually do a biopsy at the same time as the removal of the tumor. So when we do a craniotomy and we resect the tumor, a portion of that tumor is sent for um, analysis by the pathologist. And that biopsy sample then becomes the actual diagnosis. So at the time of the craniotomy and removal of the tumor, we can actually do the biopsy at the same time. So a lot of patients are concerned uh, when they hear they're going to have brain surgery about uh, the cosmetic appearance um, of a scar afterwards. Uh, in most cases, uh, the scars are completely hidden uh, behind the hairline, uh, meaning that once uh, the hair grows back um, after uh, surgery, uh, it'll be pretty much invisible. And scars also fade during time, uh, over time, and um, uh, will be uh, pretty much unnoticeable in most cases. Um, we very rarely uh, leave uh, a defect or a dent um, in the head. Uh, in most cases, uh, we have to remove a window um, through the bone to get to the brain tumor, but that 
piece of bone is replaced and fastened securely with uh, small uh, titanium uh, plates that um, are very, very small and that you don't even uh, set off uh, airport metal detectors in most cases. So uh, surprisingly, brain surgery is actually uh, much less painful than a lot of other surgeries in other parts of the body. Um, the uh, areas that we operate on uh, in the scalp are actually usually away from uh, any muscles uh, that you would get inflamed after the surgery and be a source of pain. Uh, and in the event that you know, a patient does experience some headache uh, is usually mild to moderate. And we do give uh, pain medications as needed uh, in the first couple of days after the surgery. Uh, and the vast majority of my patients, uh, after a week, uh, they really are um, off of any very strong pain medication and really uh, are just taking Tylenol basically to control uh, the pain. So that will vary uh, depending on the location and the type of tumor that a patient has. But in general, I would say that the you know, average hospital stay for uh, brain tumor removal is only about three or four days. Uh, it could uh, even be less than that in some cases, even maybe even two days. Um, and in some cases could be longer just depending on uh, the needs of the patient uh, in uh, the rehabilitation process. So, after um, surgery, you know, all our patients will get uh, a thorough evaluation, uh, usually by a physical therapist, and um, uh, they make a recommendation as to whether the patient uh, can go home with, uh, you know, perhaps some equipment or support or a, a visit from a visiting nurse versus, you know, whether they might uh, uh, benefit from a bit of a longer rehab course as an inpatient uh, where they work intensively with um, physical therapists and occupational therapists to really maximize their uh, function and return to uh, their daily activities after surgery. So approximately a year ago, we uh, started something that we had basically no premonition or very little premonition and really no anticipation of what was going to happen, and that is the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. I think in New York State, um, we had uh, the burden of cases uh, a bit earlier than in some of the other states. And uh, um, it was really important for us uh, brain tumor surgeons to understand what were the priorities for our brain tumor patients. Clearly, a brain tumor is not something that once that you know that is there, you can ignore and wait and see what happens, especially at times where we do not know when the emergency of the pandemic will uh, stop. So we try to, as, as, a, as a leadership in brain tumor uh, surgery and brain tumor oncology, we try to establish some guidelines of what is really safe and what is really needed for patients that have brain tumors. The good news is that 12 months later, everything um, is settling down. We're not over yet, um, but we do have a much better understanding of what the disease, um, there are already vaccines uh, in place. So clearly now uh, for patients that present with tumors that we anticipate are not gonna grow in the next uh, few weeks or months, the best option is really uh, before considering uh, coming into the hospital for surgery is to uh, see if a vaccination is possible. And uh, a lot of my patients um, have done so, and it is possible to obtain those vaccinations. Uh, for patients where the uh, tumor is an urgency or emergency, it is very safe to be admitted to the hospital. There are now a lot of um, uh, things that we do to ensure uh, safety of our patients and uh, also to be sure that uh, uh, those patients that are coming in uh, for surgeries are uh, sheltered from uh, other patients that might um, have COVID. So the bottom line is that it is safe 
uh, to undergo brain surgery for a brain tumor in uh, now and has been safe uh, in in the past months. And the more along we move with this pandemic, uh, the more options they are, including the vaccines. So when I tell one of my patients um, that the most likely diagnosis after seeing the patient in the office, after talking to them, after reviewing the scans, I think that most likely you have a brain tumor. Typically the first question is, but doc, is this common? And the answer is, it's not uncommon to have a brain tumor. There are many patients that have brain tumors. Those come in two different flavors, main categories uh, that are called uh, primary brain tumors, meaning that originates and stay within the brain and metastatic brain tumor, meaning that the patient already has tumor somewhere else in the body that will spread um, to the brain. And some patients don't know if they have another tumor in the body. And so sometimes that diagnosis is given through the brain tumor. The bottom line is that these are not uncommon tumors. Um, and that is very, very important to understand what are the treatment options. So as a patient, how do I know, right, that by seeing you, I will get the best possible treatment option? And I think that what I like to share with my patients is that it is very important to, to talk to your uh, provider and make sure that that individual is a specialist in brain tumors and make sure that that individual is not working alone, is working in a team. And here at Mount Sinai, um, not only we have a team of surgeons, but we also have a team that is called the multidisciplinary team. When I started the program here at Mount Sinai, that was my first goal. The goal was to make sure that when a patient is coming in, um, the patient is not just seeing me as the surgeon, but is seeing collectively all different type of physicians. So we hold tumor board um, more than once a week to discuss all patients that are seen with brain tumors so that they can be provided with the best possible um, approach and goals and discussions on what the treatments are. Very often surgery is either one of the first uh, steps or might not even be in the equation and it might be an option later on. So it is very important that we discuss it together and that we can provide the patient with the options. So what happens when the patient sees me, right? That all the other physicians are not around me. Well, the patients can rest assured because we tell them that after we see them in the office and we provide them with our recommendation, there is a whole much bigger recommendation that will follow within hours, day or so, um, that represents really the point of view of multiple other physicians. And I think that in this day and age is to be seen and to hear the options from a multidisciplinary team is much more powerful than hearing what a single individual has to say. Well, as I said, uh, surgery is sometimes um, the first option, sometimes is not an option, sometimes is an option that will come later uh, in, in the uh, treatment options. So um, surgery is not the panacea for uh, brain tumors, can definitely help patients uh, with brain tumors. I think that um, nowadays we have so many techniques and technology in, uh, in the operating room and uh, in the arena, in the territory of uh, brain tumor treatments. Uh, that surgery plays one of the roles, uh, not necessarily the primary roles at times. So the alternatives are um, many, and um, it is very important to understand what is the best one to start with. And sometimes uh, surgery might not be the best one to start with. The alternatives uh, can include minimally invasive uh, procedures. For instance, I never sh shave the hair of my patients. Um, so the scar doesn't show, they don't know, nobody can really tell that the brain surgery um, was done. Um, 
uh, the other possibility is to treat the tumors with a radio surgery. Uh, the word surgery is part of the treatment, but it's nothing to do with a blade. It is actually a very precise amount of radiation, um, almost like a laser light that goes through the skull and hits the tumor to uh, kill that tumor uh, and uh, to make it uh, uh, such that it's not longer a, a danger to the patient uh, herself, himself. And then finally, we have a lot of other targeted therapies that we can use like vaccines and uh, um, uh, we can put electrodes on the patient's head and deliver um, electrical fields. Um, and we have many more um, other things that we call clinical trials where we can give the patients the opportunity to really be the first to receive treatments that eventually might become you know, the best treatment for that particular tumor. So many options for our patients. Well, I just, I just wanna share with the audience that you know, we have a number of highly skilled and uh, experts that you know, have dedicated the careers to, to brain tumor management. And we hope that you consider Mount Sinai uh, in your decision for care of your brain tumor. And we're here for you. And if you have any questions, please let us know.